Hello and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of Jeremiah, going through Jeremiah as we go through the Bible for the fourth time. And we come today to Jeremiah chapter 40, verse 1. So if you can, get your Bible and we'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website. Is a place where you can study the entire Bible with me, all of it, all 66 books, in any order, really, that you want to study or begin in the beginning and go all the way through the end, and you can do it four times. Actually, this is the fourth series, and the New Testament is complete in the Old Testament up until Jeremiah here, um, chapter 40. But there are three complete series that you can choose from. Just click and listen. That's all you have to do at the Bible, verse by verse, dot com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Chapter 40, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after Nebu, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah when he had taken him being bound in chains among all who were carried away captive of Jerusalem and Judah, who were carried away captive unto Babylon. So at first, after the Babylonian invasion, Jeremiah was in chains like every other Israelite survivor. But notice verse 2, And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said unto him, the Lord thy God hath pronounced this evil upon this place. Interesting how Babylon understood that they were a tool, an instrument of the God of Israel to punish his people for their rebellion, <clears throat> which means that God received glory because he proved even to the ungodly Chaldeans, the Babylonians, that he was holy. And he wouldn't put up with sin. And this is why the Bible says judgment begins in the house of the, of the Lord. God can't let his people get away with sin. Or the unsaved world start to think that God condones it. That's why all this lukewarmness that's in the so-called evangelical churches today, that's going to be judged by God. It's not going to go on forever because... Because God is being misrepresented horribly. His word is being misrepresented horribly by all these preachers and teachers who are constantly looking to psychology and psychobabble and psychological terms rather than the written word of God. And yet they call themselves Christians and they give lip service to the Bible saying, oh yes, we believe in the sufficiency of scripture. Yes, we believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. And then they go and they live the exact opposite. And they don't use it. And they substitute it for psychology, psychotherapy. This, this is not going to go on forever. God's not going to allow it to go on forever. He is being misrepresented by those who claim to belong to him. And of course, in many cases, they don't belong to him. But they claim it. And so it looks bad for God. I, I'll never forget. I'll never forget the uh, the the person who was asked if he uh, if he wanted to be become a, a born again Christian if he wanted to be a Christian, and he thought for a second. He said, um, "True story." He thought for a second. And he said, hmm, "Christians, let's see. Those are the ones who always need therapy, right?" Yeah. That's the right That's the right answer. Those are the ones who always need therapy. At least that's what you would think if you, if you listen to most Christian radio stations, which I stopped doing about 20 years ago because I couldn't stomach anymore. When I first got saved, the, the, the programs that were on Christian radio and even some secular stations were, were solid Bible teaching ministries, and it began to change. As the old timers who really were radio pioneers um, began to die off or retire and those programs were taken over, new ones replaced them, it slowly but surely transformed into psychobabble 
and it was replacing the Word of God with talk shows and giggly, giggly, giggly people, you know, talking silliness, trying to be cool. Just, I got so sick and tired of turning off Christian radio that finally I just stopped turning it on. Anyway, it's all, it's all about misrepresenting God, see? And that's what the Israelites did, and that's why God judged them, and he told Babylon why he was doing it too, because his name would be vindicated. And God has not changed. And this Babylonian was sharper spiritually than most of the Israelites were at this time. He said, God punished you people for disobeying him. That's why we were able to beat you. That's why we were able to conquer you for. And now, behold, I loose thee, he's talking to Jeremiah, this day from the chains that were upon thine hand. If it seemed good unto thee, to come with me into Babylon, come, and I will look after thee well. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee, where it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, there go. So Jeremiah is given freedom to stay in Israel or to leave and go to Babylon. And if he, if he goes to Babylon. Babylon promises to take care of him. I'll tell you what, it was a rough road for Jeremiah all those years that he preached to these rebellious Israelites. But he hung in there. He didn't quit. And now he's being blessed, as blessed as one can be in the midst of a situation like this. Blessed much more than the rest of the Israelites who had rebelled against God. You hang in there with Jesus Christ and you'll be blessed in the end. Five, now, while he was not yet gone back, he said, go back also to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon hath made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people, or go wherever it seemeth convenient unto thee to go. So the captain of the guard gave him victuals and a reward, and let him go. So in the midst of God's judgment, the Lord was taking care of his faithful servant, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was not removed from the place of judgment, but instead God sustained him through the midst of it all. Six, then went Jeremiah unto Gadaliah, the son of Ahikim, to Mizpah, and dwelt with him among the people that were left in the land. Jeremiah decided, remember he was given the, the choice by Babylon, and he decided to stay in Israel with the poor people who were allowed to stay as well. Seven. Now when all the captains of the forces who were in the fields, even they and their men heard that the king of Babylon had made Gadaliah the son of Ahikam governor in the land and had committed unto him men and women and children and of the poor of the land, of them that were not carried away captive to Babylon. Then, then they came to Gadaliah, to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and Johanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Kareah, and Seraphah, the son of Tamhuthmeth, and the sons of Ephel, the Netophahite, and Jezemiah, the son of Maacharite, they and their men. And I want to thank the Holy Spirit for giving me all those names. <clears throat> God has a reason for it. Verse 9, And Gedaliah, the son of uh, Hikim, the son of Shapham, swore unto them and to their men, saying, Fear not to serve the Chaldeans, dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. Gadaliah, the governor of Israel, sorry about that. Gadaliah, the governor of Israel, encourages the surviving soldiers to be loyal to Babylon 
And he says, everything will be okay. Now remember, Gedaliah appointed by Babylon to be governor of Israel, governor of Israel, encourages the surviving soldiers of Israel to be loyal to their conquerors with the assurance that everything's going to be okay. It was God's will for Babylon to conquer and rule. So the Israelites and these soldiers must submit to Babylon or they're fighting against God which wouldn't be unusual since they've been doing it for decades, which is why they were conquered in the first place. But here's an opportunity for them to do what was right. 10. As for me, behold, I will dwell at Mizpah to serve the Chaldeans who will come unto us. But ye gather wine, summer fruits and oil, and put them in your vessels and dwell in your cities that ye have taken. Jeremiah tells them to settle down and live a normal life. 11. Likewise, when all the Jews that were in Moab and among the Ammonites and in Edom and that were in all the countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah and that he had set over them Gadaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, verse 12, even all the Jews returned out of all the places where they were driven and came to the land of Judah, to Gadaliah, unto Mizpah, and gathered wine and summer fruits very much. So the Jews who had been run out of town, as it were, the Jews who had run away during the invasion of Babylon to bordering countries returned to Israel when they heard that Babylon had established law and order in the land. 13. Moreover, Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces that were in the fields came to Gedaliah to Mizpah and said unto him, Dost thou certainly know that Baalis, Baalis, the king of the Ammonites, hath sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to slay thee? But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam believed him not. The soldiers warn the governor that had been established by Babylon to rule in Israel. The soldiers warn that governor that the king of Ammon, a bordering country, is plotting to kill him, the Babylonian governor. Gedaliah doesn't believe it, however. 15. Then Johanan, the son of Korea, spoke to Gedaliah in Mizpah secretly, saying, Let me go. I pray thee, and I will slay Ishmael, the son of Nehemiah, and no man shall know it. Why should he slay thee, that all the Jews who are gathered unto thee should be scattered, and the remnant in Judah perish? We got a good thing going here. In spite of the fact that we've been conquered by Babylon, and you're in charge, and if somebody kills you, then Babylon's not going to be too happy. And all these Jews who are finally settling down under the rule of Babylon here in Israel, they're going to be scattered again. It's just going to be more trouble. See, Gedaliah, the governor, is responsible for law and order. And things are just starting to settle down and become somewhat normal for the Jews that remained in the land. If the governor is murdered, everything is going to be chaos again. So his officer says, let me kill the man assigned from Moab to kill you. 16. But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikim, said unto Johanan, the son of Korea, Thou shalt not do this thing, for thou speakest falsely concerning Ishmael. This Ishmael character is not going to kill me. Gedaliah didn't believe that anyone would try to kill him, so he wouldn't accept the help that he was offered. You know, until one understands that they are truly in danger, they will not turn to the Savior for the help that they need. That's why the Word of God needs to be proclaimed clearly. All of it. Yes, even the part that calls sin, sin. And as I said earlier, this false form of modern evangelicalism that has replaced biblical terms with psychological terms, sickness, 
alcoholism, for drunkenness, sin in general, for behavior disorder and dysfunction. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. That's not, that's not of God. And that's why no one ever gets saved. How do you get saved from a sickness? And you assume that, well, God won't send me to hell because I'm sick. No, you're a sinner bound for hell, and you need a Savior. But until you understand that, you won't repent because you won't feel guilty, because you'll feel justified. You won't repent and receive Christ as Lord and Savior, so you won't go to hell. I'm telling you, these preachers, so-called, these pastors, these feel-good preachers and pastors and Bible teachers will burn in hell for leading others to hell and for misrepresenting Jesus Christ and for shunning the Word of God in favor of human speak. If you don't feel guilty, you don't know you need a Savior. And the reason Gadaliah, we're going to see, is going to die is because he didn't think he was in danger. And the reason people go to hell today is because they don't understand that they are in real danger. If you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me. Pray for God's word. And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the donate button and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. See you next time.